Hey guys, how you doing? We're back today with another Harrier video, and this time we're doing a more historical engagement. We're doing the Harrier versus the A4 Skyhawk. During the Falklands War, Argentina lost 45 aircraft. 22 of these were shot down by SAMs or other AAA fire from the ground. 23 of these aircraft were lost to British Harriers. These numbers are a little bit disputed, but for the most part, these seem to be the accepted numbers. The British, on the other hand, lost no Harriers to air-to-air -air combat, but they did lose five to ground fire and four more to accidents. So that brings us to the following question. Why were the Harriers so successful in air-to-air -air engagements against the Argentine Air Force? Part of it was because the British pilots fought their own fight, they refused to engage Argentine mirages at high altitudes, and played to their own strengths. The British also had a better missile. But there were other realities of the situation that need to be addressed such as the fact that the Argentine attack planes were not too focused on air-to-air -air combat. Their main priority was to knock out British ships. Most of the A-4 Skyhawks shot down by Harriers were carrying air-to-ground ordnance intended to hit landing troops or battleships in the area. There were also other logistical problems like shortage of fuel, which meant that the A-4s had to hit their targets and get out of there. There was no time to stick around dogfighting, and often they were shot down while on the run. These air-to-ground aircraft often had high-altitude escorts in the form of Argentine mirages. However, the mirages were also often short of fuel and could not come down to lower altitudes to fight the Harriers, who stayed at these lower altitudes because their aircraft performed better down low. In fact, one mirage who did come down to fight the Harriers was shot down on the 1st of May by a Sidewinder. Harriers would also often loiter just outside the fuel range for the escorts and pick off A4s that attempted any attacks on the ships or landing forces. So there really wasn't a true air-to-air -air engagement between British Harriers and Argentine A4 Skyhawks, where both sides showed up fueled up and ready for an aerial dogfight. But what if it had happened? We're going to explore that here today and see how it may have played out. Let's get started with the video. All right, guys, here we go. Harrier against Skyhawk. Uh, interesting matchup, I think. Um, both aircraft. I, I think the Harrier's a little bit better, but I think it's a decent matchup. It's much more even than Harrier versus Hornet. Um, that being said, I have the Sidewinder 9M, which is a better missile than what he's carrying. He's carrying the P5. Um, he can't carry the 9M, and I can't carry the P5. So that's as even as I can get it, you know? And uh, we're both carrying two of them. I could carry four but he can only carry two. So you can see the advantages here. You know, if I'm doing fleet defense as a British uh, Harrier, like I can carry four missiles, man. I could get, you know, up to four kills, theoretically. Um, so big difference there. All right, there's the merge. You saw me dump my nose and try to pull it through. And uh, he actually did a nice tight turn. He's now behind me over that mountaintop. And I'm gonna try to turn around and get my nose on, hopefully get a sidewinder off and wrap this fight up really quickly. You can see him right over the top there, if you watch that. There's the flares, you can see him there. Come on, give me a lock. Okay, Fox 2. Holy shit! Oh my god, <laughs> he shot down my missile, man. So I fired a, a missile and he fired his and it looks like the missiles either kinetically hit each other or proxy fused on each other. I don't know what happened, but it was so close to him that I thought the explosion may have hurt him anyway. I was expecting like pieces of an A4 to come out of that fireball. And uh, just the whole intact A4 just comes out of the smoke. That was That was pretty cool. Um, you saw me just waste another Fox 2 there, so I'm getting down to guns only. And, uh, uh, I really thought that one might hit him. I don't quite understand the Pipper on the uh, Harrier just yet. I mean, I understand the cross and, you know, the line that you see on the HUD is the projectile path. But um, we talked about how the Harrier doesn't have a radar in the last video. 
and without a radar you can't get any ranging information on the target it can't give you a lock and uh, you know tell you where to put the pipper in order to get the kill so it, it's more difficult you kind of got to get a feel for it you kind of got to do the whole world war ii shooting um, a little bit i mean again i have no ranging information but i'm sure once you practice a little bit with it um, it, it's probably not that difficult to get air-to-air -air gun kills with the Harrier. Um, I know it's for a fact it's much more difficult in the A4 Skyhawk. I mean, that thing is uh, that thing's old compared to the Harrier. You're doing straight-up World War II shooting in that thing, you know. Um, so you can see I'm actually getting up behind him a little bit. It's, it's very, very... Oh, here we go. Hold up. Hold up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I suck. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. <laughs> Ooh. Tried to hit him with a little sidewinder there. Alright, let's try to force an overshoot. Put some flares out because he still has one more missile. So, Oh, he hit me. Whoops. Alright, there's the overshoot. Very good, and then we're going to recover the aircraft here. Going to recover the aircraft here. Okay. <laughs> all right, and uh, all right. So you can see I, I can kind of turn with him. I can. I don't want to say I can one circle fight him. I think he might be better at that, just because the stability on the Harrier. Um, but in terms of you know turning with him and all that stuff, it seems like I, I'm capable of that. And so I got the line on him here. I don't. I don't know. I might have hit him there at least once. I'm not sure. I don't think I did though. Is he going down? No, he's fine. And so the A4 was called the Scooter. It was nicknamed the Scooter because it is a nimble little bird and uh, it, it's quite fun to fly from what I hear. And, uh, you know, it was used, you know, we saw it in Top Gun in the uh, Top Gun program. I think a stripped down version of it was used to dogfight the f-14 i assume they stripped it down because the f-14 would absolutely goof on this thing if it tried to you know like i'm not having too much difficulty in the harrier but if you give me an f-14 i mean that thing would barely stand a chance right all right here's the i can maybe get the line on him here and get a kill ah I don't understand this gun sight. <laughs> I don't understand it at all. To be honest, I think what's happening is I'm not leading enough and those rounds are falling short. Um, it is a 25 millimeter uh, round, so it is a little bit heavier than the, the normal 20 millimeter that I'm used to firing. Uh, so I, I may not be leading it enough. That could be the issue. Like the Mirage, for example, or the Russian aircraft, they fire the 30 mil, and it's quite a heavy round. You got to get close, and you got to lead a decent amount to hit them. I think I can hit them here, though. Come on. See, those are those are short for sure. I'm shooting short for sure. So I think I, I kind of I'm understanding what's going on here. And I've only got 134 rounds left, so. Ah, see? Ah. Yes. Okay, now that I have a slightly better understanding of the, uh, the gun, and I can actually maybe hit him. He is smoking pretty nicely here. I see lots of black smoke, white smoke. Um, I think I could probably wrap this up and get the kill. I don't have too many rounds left though. Um, I got 107, but the the good news is if I can hit him just one more time, um, he's definitely out of the fight there. So I'm, I, di I didn't want to shoot there just because I want to be a little conservative with the rounds. I don't want to waste too much more just in case I need them. And so you can see at this point, he's actually maneuvering a little better. I don't know if he's leaking fuel. If he is leaking fuel, then uh, he's going to be performing a little better as he gets lighter and lighter, you know. And I, that, I would venture a guess that that's what that white smoke is that you see. I think that's leaking fuel because I did pepper him pretty good there. I think I hit him at least three or four times 
um, in that little segment. And so here we go. We're I'm kind of trying to turn fight them a little bit. I know you guys said to put the nozzles down to 30 or 40 degrees for this, um, but I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit scared to do that. I don't quite understand the Harrier fully yet to, to do that. I, I don't know if you need to use flaps, so um, I got to fly the Harrier more before I start doing some of those Harrier tricks. Um, but I did read the comments and I, I did see what you guys said to do. So I appreciate you guys giving me that kind of feedback. I'm going to try it in later videos. I had the line on them, sort of. That's my fault. I'll give it that. And how did I miss that? You see that? He was, what, 30 centimeters off my nose there? And I missed. I missed that. That's embarrassing. I might have to cut this out of the video. <laughs> I, I think I can get him here if he would just climb, which he seems like he's doing here. And as he climbs, he's going to get slower. And getting a little slower is going to be an easy target. There it is. Boom. There we go. There's the ejection. And splash one. So that was uh, one of the longer dogfights I've ever done. And uh, I, I think it was, uh, it was very rewarding. And a good fight to the A4. ladies next round so the skyhawk uh you can see it's kind of at a disadvantage you know it, it's it kind of feels like it doesn't have as much power as the harrier and uh, even even though none of these uh aircraft have afterburner which i think is uh is a good matchup imagine if the harrier had afterburner <laughs> and it was fighting against the uh the skyhawk i mean it would absolutely dominate it uh, but the skyhawk you know it holds its own for you know a vietnam era air to ground aircraft it can kind of give the Harrier a hard time if it really tries. Um, I do think that the missiles make a huge difference. The fact that he only carries the uh, AIM-9 P5s as the best missile he can carry, and I carry the 9M, which means I'm carrying a significantly better missile. Um, there's the merge, by the way. And, uh, you know, it makes a difference in these fights, man, because I can shoot them head-on. I think a uh, P5 shot head-on would be very difficult. And uh, I think that gives him a major disadvantage. Here's the Lock Fox 2, and he's dropping all kinds of flares. That missile's going to miss. Good pre flaring by the uh, A4 Skyhawk there. So, yeah, the, the difference in missiles is a huge, huge, uh, a big deal. Uh, my 9Ms can actually pull a little bit with a turning aircraft, not like a 9X, obviously. Um, but if you're turning, I can fire uh, a 9M at you, and it might turn and hit you. I had to go for guns there, was going to, but he closed really quickly. Um, his missiles, the 9M, uh, what am I saying, the AIM-9 P5s, they don't really turn well. Um, if, if, the, if the Bandit is doing any kind of turning, really, those missiles don't tend to turn very well. And it uh, makes it very, very difficult to, to get a hit. Here he is climbing. This is exactly what I want. Come on, we're going to put guns on him here. I got a good feeling about this one. Yes. See, I'm getting the hang of those guns. All right, he's definitely going down. Like he is all kinds of messed up here. Um, he was on fire on both wings. There's no way he survives that. No way. And splash one. Good fight. Good fight. Getting the hang of that that uh, Harrier gun is uh, it's nice. You know, it's nice to be able to hit things with it. Alright guys, so we'll do the last fight here. And uh, yeah, so I was looking at the uh, history of the whole Falklands uh, air war. And it's quite interesting, like there's a little bit of a debate that goes on about the numbers. You know, definitely 
there, there was one incident where they said that maybe a Harrier was shot down. The uh, Argentines made that claim. I believe it was shot down by a Mirage, but the UK denies that. So I don't know if that's true. Um, if you have information or an article or something that I haven't seen, by all means, post it below and uh, I'll have a look at it. Um, but as far as I know, no Harriers were shot down. And uh, you got to have a little bit of respect for these uh, Argentinian guys who showed up to a place where they knew. There's the merge, by the way. Um, who knew that a lot of their buddies had been shot down here by Harriers. And they were pushing outside of the, the cover zone where the Mirages could cover them. Oh, he, he got in behind me. And, uh, you know, they were they were pushing past their air cover and uh, with air to ground ordnance and trying to hit ships and stuff. You know, whatever side you're on, you got to admit that takes some balls. So, uh, you know, both these guys and the British, too, really, they fought really well. And uh, so did the Argentinians. Um, this guy's actually pushed up behind me. And uh, he's doing a really good job of maneuvering this time. I'm having a bit of trouble shaking him off me. You can see he's trying to pull his nose around and pull some lead get those shots off he still has sidewinders at this point so I'm just dropping a couple flares here or there and so he's doing he's doing really nice this time I, th I think it could be problematic this time there's that sidewinder you see what I'm saying when I say it can't turn um, it's good for you know targets flying straight maybe if he can sneak up on somebody um, then those sidewinders are effective. Otherwise, they're kind of just, uh, they kind of suck, not gonna lie. Um, okay, and uh, so here we're gonna try to force an overshoot. We'll try to do that same stuff. And uh, there's that sidewinder goes right by me, and uh, he tried to gun me, he flew by. I love that overshoot, man. You can make just about anything overshoot in a Harrier, and it's, it's kind of fun. Um, as we dubbed it in the last video, it's called uh, Harrier Bullshit. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not going to lie, it doesn't really get old. I quite enjoy it. And so I'm going to try to put some guns on him that time. And I was just kind of hoping, I was trying to get lucky there, to be honest. I don't think any of those were actually close to hitting him. And uh, that's going to go short. You can see he's dumped his nose a little bit. He's trying to use as much of that altitude that he can. And I got a Sidewinder Fox 2. And that's going to go for the flares. We'll give him another one, Fox 2. And that one was too close. And also seemed to maybe have gone for the flares. So I'm all out of Sidewinders now, which is... Uh, it's, not a, it's never a good sign. You can still get a gun kill, but... Uh, you're kind of starting to run out of options here. And he's going to come up behind. He actually hit me there. So like I said, he's flying a little bit better this time. A little bit more aggressively. Okay, here he is on the 6. And we'll see if we can make him overshoot again. Oh, ouch. He actually hit me that again and again and again this is bad and again oh okay I'm, I'm busted up pretty bad that time he flew pretty well I'm out I'm out he messed me up pretty good we're out good kill to the a4 that time well done Alright guys, so we'll do our quick tack view review. I don't want to take too long on this one because the video is already pretty long. Um, there's the merge. You can see I'm coming in at uh, indicated of 532, Mach 0 0.9. He's coming in at Mach 0 0.63. So he's significantly slower than me. And uh, we're actually going to speed this up just a little bit. And uh, this is the one where the missiles hit each other. So he actually turns the wrong way here. And I think uh, uh, keeping visibility is one of the issues here. Um, the A4 doesn't have a fantastic uh, line of sight and visibility from the cockpit, so uh, 
it, it that's one of the problems with it when you're dog fighting and so here we can see this is the part where i bring the nose around he has found me obviously he sees me now and he sees that my nose is pointing at him so he drops his flares um, anticipating a fox 2 shot which is absolutely correct the only thing i would say is um, dropping three flares is not that great you need to drop um, one two three four five like you just need to drop them in a line like this a little bit more effective than just a pocket of flares and uh, so here we get a 3,000 foot sidewinder launch and he actually launches when that missile is a thousand one hundred feet away from him and then let's see what happens here 57 feet I think they may have proxy fused on each other unless his missile was fired with a lock on this missile I don't know what happened there but um, this is the part where I just see a massive explosion right and oh did he shoot guns as well a, a couple of gun rounds went right by me here I didn't even notice that yeah he shot guns there's a little bit of gunfire from here and it went right by my head look at that I didn't even see that in the video so he put a couple of rounds just off to my right and explosion and I didn't I, I saw a big ass explosion and I was like he is dead for sure and then he comes flying out of the smoke like that and uh, it was a it was a cool little cinematic scene I thought um, but then anyway from there we just dumped the nose uh, let's see some more notable parts so here I try to get another sidewinder off at him uh, it's about 4,000 feet off 3,000 to two five and that's pretty close for a sidewinder a 9m if it was a 9x maybe but uh, 9m that's gonna be a hard shot and you know then we get into this whole thing I'm doing circles with him on the deck here I actually get a gun solution here the fight really should be over here but uh, I'm terrible with the gun and I don't want to do 45 minute tag view review of me missing with the gun but you can see right here, he actually forces an overshoot, which is very nice. Good work by him. And once I overshoot, he fires that sidewinder way too close, but uh, I think they're so useless that he's just happy to get them off his aircraft. And um, I start doing some barrel rolls. He actually hits me through there, but the Harrier can take a bit of punishment. So we recover the aircraft and uh, head back in you can see once again the shooting like you can see how the tracers are you know they're short or they're long or you know I just don't fully have a grasp of what's going on with the Harrier's gun sight at that point in the fight and um, yeah so the rest of it is really just me sitting behind him and uh, oh we got a little bit of a rolling scissor here going a little bit yeah Oh, not really. I was going to say, I don't remember that from the fight. But, uh, yeah, so I just sit back here and I'm just waiting for the gun kill. And there was one little part here where he actually starts to outturn me a little bit, and it's somewhat impressive. It's right around here. And it really drills home the point of energy management. You can see here he starts off... Um, at a true air speed of 199, I'm 253, and so I'm not pulling too, too hard on my stick because the Harrier, if you pull too hard, it'll just kind of flop over, and at this altitude, that's really not what I need, and so you can see he's pulling um, more degrees a second through that turn than me. I'm pulling 15.8, he's pulling 17.6. If he can sustain this, he'll come around the circle, but here's the thing. Look at his speed, true air speed 163, 162, and he actually starts to lose lift on his aircraft. So he has to straighten out and try to, uh, you know, regain some airspeed. And that's all I need to come up behind him. And uh, once again, I'm terrible with the gun. So he <laughs> survives that, but it really should have been over there. And uh, the fight just ends right here when he climbs and gets killed. 
All right, guys, so that's going to be the video for today. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you to Longshot for helping out with this video. You should definitely check out his channel. Link in the video description. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.